Contrary to popular belief, squirting isn't a myth. It's a natural phenomenon that every woman can experience. It's time we debunk some common misconceptions about this topic. For starters, squirting is not something out of the ordinary or a trick that only a select few can pull off. It's a natural response to sexual stimulation and can greatly enhance the pleasure for both partners involved. It's not an elusive mystical event, but rather a testament to the complexity and wonder of the female body. Now that we've cleared the air, it's time to delve into the how-to. Open and honest communication forms the bedrock of any sexual escapade. This is particularly true when you're venturing into the realm of squirting. It's not just about the physical techniques, but also about creating an environment of trust and openness. When we talk about communication, we're not just talking about words. Yes, expressing your intentions and desires verbally is important. But equally important is your ability to listen, to understand, and to respond to your partner's nonverbal cues. Here's where comfort and consent come into play. Ensure your partner is comfortable with the idea of squirting and is open to exploring this aspect of her sexuality. Consent is not a one-time thing. It's an ongoing dialogue that fosters trust and intimacy. You see, squirting can be a deeply personal and emotional experience. It requires a level of vulnerability that can only be achieved through sincere and respectful communication. And why is this so important? Because when your partner feels safe and valued, her body is more likely to respond positively to your touch. This in turn increases the chances of achieving that coveted squirting orgasm. Remember, her pleasure is your pleasure. Foreplay isn't just a prelude, it's the main event. Now let's dissect this statement and delve into the importance of foreplay and arousal in achieving squirting orgasms. In the grand opera of sexual pleasure, foreplay is the overture, setting the tone and pace for the entire performance. It's the slow burn that ignites the fireworks. It's the appetizer that whets your appetite for the main course. And in the context of squirting orgasms, it's the key that opens the door. Foreplay is the time to stimulate erogenous zones, those hot spots of the body that are particularly sensitive to sexual arousal. This includes not just the obvious areas, but also often overlooked locations such as the neck, earlobes or inner thighs. The goal here is to build a crescendo of desire, a mounting wave of anticipation that will in due time break into a torrent of pleasure. How do you do this effectively? It's all about a slow, sensual exploration. Use your hands, your lips, your breath. Be creative and adventurous. This is not a race to the finish line. It's a leisurely stroll through a garden of delights. Remember, the goal is to build arousal, to stoke the fires of desire until they're roaring and ready to explode. And this is where patience comes in. Everyone is different and what works for one person may not work for another. It's about finding out what makes her tick, what sends her over the edge. And this takes time, practice, and a willingness to listen, to learn, and to adapt. And let's not forget the power of mental arousal, a whispered word, a lingering glance, a suggestive comment. These can be just as powerful as physical touch, if not more so. The brain, after all, is the most powerful sexual organ we possess. So there you have it. Foreplay isn't just a prelude, it's the main event. It's the key to unlocking the door to squirting orgasms. So, take your time, explore, experiment, and remember, patience is the key. The elusive G-spot once found can unlock a world of pleasure. This mysterious area, often shrouded in myth and misunderstanding, plays a vital role in the phenomenon of squirting. So, let's demystify this together. The G-spot, named after the German gynecologist Ernst Grafenberg, is an area of the female anatomy that, when stimulated, can lead to powerful orgasms and, yes, even squirting. It's located one to two inches inside the front wall of the vagina. It's not a distinct, separate entity, but rather an area where the internal structure of the clitoris touches the vagina. Finding the G-spot can be a bit like a treasure hunt. It's unique to each woman and can vary in location, size and sensitivity. Some women may feel a distinct area of sensitivity, while others may not. It's all about exploration and understanding each other's bodies. Now let's talk about stimulation. It's not a one-size-fits-all situation. Some women may respond to a come-hither motion, while others may prefer more pressure or different movements. It's important to experiment and communicate to find out what works best. Remember, the aim is not just to find the G-spot, but to enhance the overall sexual experience. So, don't get hung up on the destination and forget to enjoy the journey. Keep the atmosphere relaxed, fun and open. It's not about performance, but connection and pleasure. 
It's also important to note that not all women will squirt, and that's perfectly normal. Everyone's body is different, and what brings pleasure can vary greatly. So don't set squirting as the ultimate goal. The real goal should be mutual satisfaction and enjoyment. Finding the G-spot can be a game changer, but remember, it's just one piece of the puzzle. The journey to squirting is a complex dance of arousal, stimulation and communication. So keep exploring, keep communicating and most importantly keep having fun. The final push can be intense, but with proper care and attention it can lead to a squirting orgasm. The last stretch of this journey is a dance of finesse and intuition. It's about reading the signs, the subtle shifts in breathing, the changes in body language, the escalating intensity. All these are signals that the moment is near. Remember, you're not trying to force an orgasm. You're guiding it, coaxing it out like a surfer riding a wave. You'll know you're on the right track when you feel a sudden tension, almost like a tightening. That's the moment to keep going. Maintain your rhythm, stay consistent. It's a delicate balance between intensity and sensitivity. But here's a crucial bit, don't stop immediately once the climax is reached. This is where aftercare comes into play. It's about providing comfort and reassurance. It's about letting the body relax and come back down to earth. Hold them, stroke their hair, whisper soothing words. Let them know they're safe and cherished. It's this combination of intensity and gentleness, of pushing and then soothing that can lead to a squirting orgasm. But remember, it's not about chasing the squirt. It's about the connection, the intimacy, the shared pleasure. It's about exploring and celebrating each other's bodies, about learning what makes your partner tick. So take your time, be patient, and above all, communicate. Because at the end of the day, it's not just about the physical act, it's about the emotional connection, the trust, the shared experience. And that's something that can't be rushed or forced. Remember, the journey is as important as the destination.